What If Season 2, Episode 2. Thoughts? This episode's called What If Peter Quill Attacked Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Another episode I love. Like, almost everything MCU leading up to this. Uh, yeah, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to this, including this. And, yeah, let's dive right in. So, yeah, you know it's a good day when Peggy Carter makes an appearance. And, yeah, so Peter lands in New York in 1988. And I really appreciate, like, later in the episode, we're told, you know, he didn't want any of this. He's just, you know, trying to get home. He didn't attack anyone until they started attacking him. You know, and they, they perceived him as dangerous. And he ended up being dangerous because of it. You know, not... Let's see. And in fact, you know, when when he thinks he's safe, he's just going to a carnival, you know, but they attack him again. You know, it's this thing of they see something powerful and it's not, they don't know for sure if it's on their side, so they assume it must be against them. And yeah, so very cool to see some of the cast return. And let's see. Um, yeah, so we, we see what happened six months earlier, and yeah, you know, this is, this is what would happen if Yondu did not have a change of heart, if he just gave him to, to Peter, to, to Ego, uh, gave Peter to Ego, as had been requested. Very cool Z Project Pegasus. And yeah, you know, we must assemble a team. <laughs> and yeah, Hank. Very you know, a lot of great character moments as as usual for, for this sort of thing. And yeah, the you know, Hank don't hang up and he hangs up. You know, that's completely you know, for a smart guy, you are very slow to pick you know, okay, don't talk to me, look at the TV, and we get the, you better come take a look at this cliche, and <laughs> it takes her to work with him, which, I mean, in the long term does end up, like, saving the day, so I guess it was good, but he didn't know that, he's, yeah, and, yeah, Goliath is back, yet again, voiced by Lawrence Fishburne, and yeah, Bucky is is back. Sebastian Stan voicing him again, and the ah, what's the word? Um, they they do a really good job. Like this is Bucky before he gets broken out of the the mind control. So it's a lot like how he was in Winter Soldier. The, yeah, the movie Winter Soldier. And. Yeah, very cool to see Wendy Lawson again, and apparently that is Annette Benning. I I didn't catch her name in the opening credits, but I didn't look at every single name. But it does make a lot of sense. Like she has a very distinct voice. You you'd have a hard time finding someone who can do a really good job imitating it, and she's got some of the best lines. And yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You know, this is this is long before. Or, I guess not long, this is six years, I guess, before the events of, or, yeah, yes, before the events of Captain Marvel, so, the, yeah, this is before Carol Danvers becomes, so, yeah, you know, Wendy Lawson has some, you know, she has expertise, and she has the flying thingy, you know, jetpack-like thing on the suit, so she's, uh, yeah. She's like the, the Bruce Banner, you know, more effective as, as like a science person. But that's, you know, she, she's a big part of saving the day. And, yeah, I like <laughs> Hank uses ants to attack. And, and he covers the, the, what's it called? The, um, um, yeah, that, that thing, the, the, um, cotton candy, you know. And tries to intimidate uh, Peter by taking out the lights and just, yeah. 
and yeah, the, it seems like he's he's trapped by all these lasers. You know, one of the lasers cuts off the head of the stuffed teddy bear. So it's like, okay, you know, they're, these are serious. The, it's not that they set off alarms; they cut off. Yeah, and yeah, through some explosions, he gets out of there. But Thor manages to to take him out, and <laughs> we get another re reference to how Thor looks like a rock figure from the 80s, you know, Van Halen. <laughs> I like that the kids bond, you know, and we have the, they, they reenact the thing of, like, now it's, now it's Hope, who's, who's, you know, running along, singing, dancing to, to music on a, um, cassette player, you know, which, like, yeah, 1988, makes sense that she had a cassette player back then. And, you know, and, and they do the thing where someone else watches and because we don't hear the music, they look kind of silly. And this time it's Peter seeing someone else do that. So that's a neat little reversal there. And yeah, they bond over both liking their dead mom's songs. And, and I do really appreciate, like, she, you know, she sees this kid and it's like, oh, he's just, he's just a kid. Like, okay, maybe he's super powerful. But like he's he just misses home, you know. It's it's this thing of like it takes someone who's removed from the situation, you know. And and also you know the thing about you know you know this this thing of you know what's what's so bad about Missouri because it's, you know and, and what Missouri? I thought my dad said you're an alien. Call me, you know. Ah, I can't believe I'm playing. That. Hold on. Um, Call me Bruce Springsteen, because I'm born in America. <laughs> wow. And that is exactly, yeah, he's, that's that's how adult Peter talks, certainly. So, makes a lot of sense. And, yeah, she uses shrinking technology to break Peter out of there. And I like the shot of her the feet dangling off the, the chair. Like, she's not completely taking the situation seriously. And it's just... It's a fun, like, the fact that she's surrounded by adults with superpowers, you know, just, yeah, being almost interrogated. And we have the, yeah, you know, they discuss whether or not to kill Peter, and I do appreciate, like, that's the first thing that Bucky says at all, like, we should kill him, you know, just, like... <laughs> it's, you know, mur murder is just always on the Winter Soldier's mind. And I appreciate that the the computer that Ego uses, you know, that... Huh. Did he not have Mantis yet? I guess they didn't... I guess it's possible Mantis stopped help. Is this supposed to be before? I'm not 100% certain if, if Peter was before... Yeah, well, uh, anyway, but yeah, you know, he's got a, a ship computer, and it's clearly Kurt Russell voicing it, like, Ego only likes reflections of himself. That feels 100%, yeah. And I, I appreciate that the little flying ship thing, that is what we saw used in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That's what Ego flew in, so of course it's what, you know, little Peter Quill would fly in as well. The girl was right. Boy, what I wouldn't give for the, that to be on a t-shirt. That's a good line. That's, yeah. If you've watched, you know, since watching season one of, of the show and now watching this, I've watched the entirety of the Agent Carter TV show on ABC. Yeah. Uh, you know, her not being listened to by men is a major theme there. So, yeah, that feels like a nod to that. <laughs> How do we get a kid to fight their father? You're not a parent, are you? <laughs> and... Yeah, pretty cool when Ego fights the Avengers and he raises this army. Like, very clever, you know, he landed in this desert, so he makes a bunch of Ego, you know... Which, again, you know, all he makes are reflections of himself. He wants Peter to be one... You know, Mantis does everything he says and is clearly afraid of him. You know, his computer has its own voice 
every member of his army that he raises looks exactly like him. Just and yeah, he made them out of the sand. And you know, if there's enough sand in one place, it can be kind of heavy. So that's a very clever little like it, it wouldn't have felt quite as effective if he just you know, if they just poofed into existence, like, what? No, but, you know, but he can make things, that he, in, in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, he makes, like, he uses rocks as, as a weapon, and I think, isn't, ah, it's been a little while since I watched it, but I think the big face, no, wait, no, that's the planet core, whatever, he makes, like, things out of rock in the, the climax of Guardians 2. And we have the... Yeah, I like, you know, I, I think it's uh, Howard Stark who refers to, to Bucky as our resident Terminator because, you know, by this point, the Terminator was only four years old. A little baby with, you know, glowing eyes, tiny little skeleton walking around exterminating humanity. And, yeah, you know, in reality, the movie, The Terminator, it is in part a metaphor for the Soviet Union, you know, you, they, they, it, you know, l like what American propaganda against the Soviet Union would have you believe about the citizens of it, they look human, they're extremely strong, they, they look like perfect specimens, they have no humanity, and they will kill us all, you know, so just, yeah, I appreciate someone, a, a, you know, yeah, a killer from the Soviet Union being called Terminator, that's a good, yeah. And we have the thing, you know, are you ready to comply? Which is a great little, because we know, you know, he usually kills. So, so yeah, you know, we do legitimately worry he's going to kill, you know, little Peter. Because, and, and this is, you know, that is very accurate. The Soviet Union sometimes made, you know, I'm not making any excuses for it. Sometimes would make extremely just like, yeah, terrible decisions in in short-sightedness you know so yeah they would be like well the kid's a threat we got to kill him but then you know they wouldn't be able to stop ego and you know there's a there's a story where the soviet it was this um like uh what's it called like a guard you know he he saw something and he was supposed to to just immediately react as if it was for sure like a nuclear weapon, but it was actually like I want to say, was it a balloon? I think it's the, the you know, that was what inspired the song "99 Red Luft Balloons," you know, and and yeah, because he was like, uh, let's just I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that it's you know if it's really a nuke, you know. So he thankfully he took you know he made sure it wasn't a nuke, so you know nuclear war was not started. He was fired. Because the orders were to treat everything as, you know, it, no, no, but you saw something you thought, you thought was a nuke. That means we fire our nukes, you know. So, so yeah, this is a sadly very accurate uh, depiction of Soviet Union, you know, short-term thinking. And, let's see, you know, sadly a lot of militaries have had very short-term thinking, including in the West. America has done a lot of damage. Anyway, um, I kind of like that it's these two, you know, these fathers, you know, Hank says, you know, things haven't been the same since um, Hope lost her mom. I haven't been the same. But, you know, there's still, you know, um, yeah, and, and meanwhile Howard is talking to, you know, and, and it's very, yeah, 100% I believe that Howard Stark could intercept the, the handler's call. You know, he says, there's hope for the future. You know, so, so yeah. And, you know, it, it is the kind of thing where it's like, I mean, Hank realizing that so long before, you know, it like in, in the main continuity, he doesn't get there until 2015. But, you know, they, they, yeah. Maybe some of the stuff that happens here sped it up. That's I can I can buy that. And yeah, ego uses the the light based uh, tentacles to get the seedling. Which again, we saw those in Guardians Two. 
and Peter attacks Ego's physical form. Love the Kirby dots because this is supposed to be a cosmic attack. And then we have the let's see, yeah, and and yeah, um, Wendy Lawson introduces the two kids to to Goose, which yeah, that's a a cute little moment and. Peter says he's more of a dog person, which, has there been, I'm not sure I can think of anything where that really comes across. So I guess this is a bit of new information. And I love, you know, Hope is like, Peter, don't turn down a free cat. And... Yeah, I like the, you know, yeah, and apparently, yeah, so so they're having the victory party, and it's like, you know, so what is this libation? Very exotic. Oh, it's um light beer. Jeez, I thought it was a victory party. Anyway, the, the yeah, and I think, yeah, I think it's when Thor is leaving, you know, Wendy's like, aren't you staying for dessert? Hank burnt a pie. <laughs> I'm really glad that we're seeing, because, like, we saw she was she was snarky she was snarcastic in the the little bit we've seen of her before this. I hope they bring her back again. She was a lot of fun here, and her and Hank Pym like these kind of you know slightly surly like not super happy about how things have worked out kind of you know him more than her, but just they they play off each other really well and just like you know saying burnt a pie instead of baked a pie just yeah. And and we also had the thing about, you know, he thought that splitting the atom was more intuitive than than baking, which yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and, and yeah, Thor points out we have to take out Ego the planet as well. And it's like, you know, we we're a team, you know, and, and he even says, you know, uh, something like things will not be okay until the dead have been avenged. So they even have the the name the Avengers. I suppose it's possible that this that we'll see these Avengers in a later episode. It's not. I don't think it's been revealed yet if this season, like season one, is going to end in a big team up kind of thing. I mean, if they do, this one didn't really introduce anyone that we hadn't seen as... Goliath had never been an Avenger before, but other than that, you know... Oh, right, right, yeah, obviously, T'Chaka hadn't been. So that's... But the... Yeah, anyway. Um, I kind of hope we see the the various you know I, I thought they they played off each other really well I especially like I mentioned you know Wendy and Hank I, I hope we see more of them playing off each other in another episode of of this and yeah um really really glad that like Kurt Russell Michael Douglas and Annette Benning are still acting because like not you know some sometimes when they reach a certain age, actors are not given as many opportunities, but they can still act. <laughs>